1864, over a period of two months, there were two battles fought near this place. So here we are in Pilot Bay in the beautiful city of Taronga in New Zealand. Taronga is actually a Maori name that means safe anchorage or resting place. But in 1864, over a period of two months, there were two battles fought near this place that were some of the bloodiest battles of what they call the New Zealand Wars, which was a war between the British Empire and the Maori people of New Zealand. The New Zealand Wars were essentially one big land dispute gone wrong. Back in 1840, the Maori people and the British government entered into what's called the Treaty of Watangi. And this treaty, in return for giving the Maori people undisputed possession of their land, their fisheries, and their forests, asked from them three things. One was that they would only sell their land to the British government. The second was that they would become British subjects. And thirdly, that they would give up their sovereignty to the British government. It's this final point, the point on the sovereignty of the Maori that will cause the most trouble for the next 150 years. And this was because when the British translated the Treaty of Watangi into Maori for the Maori people to sign, the word that they used for sovereignty in Maori did not have the same meanings and connotations as it does for us in English. There's a debate even to today whether the British did this or not on purpose. I personally believe that they did. And I think that they did it on purpose because they knew there was going to be further conflict with the Maori people in New Zealand. So they knew that if the Maori had agreed to become sovereign subjects of the British Empire, if they then resisted British occupation, they could be treated as rebels. And if they were treated as rebels, there could be punishments. And those punishments could include the taking of Maori land. And that's exactly what happened. After the signing of the Treaty of Watangi, with a lot of pressure from the colonial settlers, the British government tried to speed up land sales with the Maori. This ultimately led to an increase in tensions between the Maori and the British government, which put both parties on the road to war and to the two battles I'm going to talk about today. Both of these battles happened on the outskirts and inside today what is the city of Taronga. So what's such a big deal about these battles? Well, the first one, the Battle of Gate Paw, turned into an absolute stunning victory for the Maori. Where just 230 Maori warriors were able to repel an invading force of over 2,000 British soldiers. Two months after the Battle of Gate Paw, the British were able to surprise the Maori at Teiranga and completely broke the Maori resistance. After the Battle of Teiranga, the remaining Maori surrendered to the British forces. The British, rather than treating the Maori as a sovereign force that they had defeated, looked at them as rebels who were rising up against the British Empire. And as a part of the peace process, the British government confiscated the Maori land. Some of it they confiscated by forced sale, but most of it they simply stole through legislation. The effects of this confiscation of land can even be felt today. There's nothing about this situation that is anything new other than standard practice of what British imperialism was in the 18th and 19th century. What is new in this is how the Maori have chosen to respond to it today. It was not until recently through the Watangi Tribunal that the Maori people were able to reach a settlement over their legally, illegally confiscated lands. Rather than continuing to be bitter and resentful at a treaty that was mistranslated over 150 years ago, they've chosen a different approach, and that's the approach of reconciliation. That a settlement was even reached in the first place is a testament to the spirit of the Maori people and their willingness and ability to move through the pain and suffering of their past to move forward towards reconciliation. Conflict and war are inevitable parts of human nature, but as the Maori people have shown us, so are hope and reconciliation. I've decided I really enjoy giving context and history to the places that we're visiting, and I've got more videos like this planned, so if you enjoyed this one, 
please give me a like and subscribe to my channel.